TGN fam and YouTube, what is up in our Tech File Overtime finale uh, for the TGN Network? We are going to be <laughs> taking a look at the new Netflix documentary, The Redeem Team, doing a little Tech File Cinema, you know, telling y'all how we felt about it, recapping the action, and just having a general conversation about it. So we hope y'all enjoy it. We're going to get into it right after the theme hits. your boy t-i-m-k-i-n-z the number three aka as aka mr Gibson. i'm trying to be quiet but excited at the same time is it working i i feel like coming through <laughs> i feel like coming through i'm the rj only known as the rj and i'm camille point guard of the crew the real life tifa lockhart the girl next door you know holding down for all the women who love sports and Mr. Boy K. Harris, the gentleman, legend, the everyday gentleman, 24-7, uh, but better known as K. Diddy. Take that. Take that. Oh, you go, now, at- <laughs> Turn the polls <laughs> off, my nigga. All that ass ain't, you know, it ain't even Thursday yet. Whoa. Huh, you Whoa, so sir. You wildin', bro. You are wildin'. You are wildin'. <laughs> The liquor game. And nobody told me to react to that screen like that, bro. <laughs> and he watching the Lakers. You you out here <laughs> taking it to a whole different level. But no, everybody listening. Um, as mentioned in the intro, uh, this is our finale with the Good News Network. Uh, you know, we've been doing our podcast since 2017. We joined on with Good News, mm. I believe, in 2020 or 2021. I know it was during the pandemic. Um, and we've been rocking with them ever since. And as the network has grown and done, undergone some changes, uh, one thing that that required us to do was to create this second show to be exclusive to the Good News Radio Network. Um, and at this point in our lives, in our podcasting careers, as one might say, uh, we can't do it no more, boss. <laughs> we gave it a try. Uh, we've definitely grown and learned, and we have nothing but love for the Good News Network. For sure. Uh, so we're going to... Absolutely. Go out with a bang discussing a documentary that once we saw the preview, bang, bang, saw, saw the preview for, we were just kind of like, oh, yeah, we got to do a tech file cinema on this. And that is about the Redeem Team. This documentary here on Netflix, just recapping that 2008 Olympic team, the history behind it, and kind of why they were significant in the first place. So to start, let's talk about why the Redeem Team even had to be and go back and take a look at that 2004 olympic team so the documentary kicks off and i was startled because the first thing you hear is kind of like kobe's voice and i was like oh wait i didn't didn't realize it was gonna be yeah like, I was, I, that wasn't the first thing i thought i was going to hear and then you see him sit down with, with lebron okay like this is young lebron i can always tell lebron's age by the hairline what the hair is doing oh, no. like, <laughs> and the beard that's a good point like his 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 face is going to tell me what era of lebron <laughs> <laughs> this is. And as soon as I saw that line in the way it was, I said, Oh, this is young LeBron still. I don't, I don't, <laughs> He's still, he, he, still he, real. He's still real. Young. So you see it kick off that way, and they kind of recap that 2004 team that lost twice in the Olympics to take home a bronze medal. And first question I just have for y'all is like, seeing that recap of the 04 team, was there anything that y'all forgot uh, or was reminded of and was like, Dang, I forgot that happened or didn't even know? And, and was shocked to learn when just kind of recapping that old four team. No, that re, that old four team was vivid. I'm I'm a big like I love the Olympics, so whenever like basketball came around, I was even though I wasn't like big into it like early on, it was the United States in the Olympic sport. And I'm like, okay, I know what basketball is. I played basketball, whatever the case may be. Even though I wasn't into it deep in like the NBA yet, 
but you know they're understanding and like yeah that shit was no nah, them them niggas was vivid <laughs> it's like, like it was a reminder of we really went in there and was like eh just cause we did the shit we made the shit we the shit we've always been the shit we gonna be the shit and they got smoked boy they got smoked and it was a it was a reminder of kind of like yeah don't take this shit for granted like even today like the, the best players in the NBA are not from the United States Giannis, so, MB, Jokic, Jokic, Luka. Luka. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's four right there. <laughs> it's, 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 it's already, at the time they were saying it was catching up, but no, it's it's caught up for a show, for a show. You got other, you got generational talent coming from, from other countries, not the United States. So, yeah, there was a vivid reminder. You can't go in and just think that we got this shit because you made this shit. Pegasus and Yu-Gi-Oh, my bad. Ken, Eric. Um, I don't know, like, uh, it felt a little contradictory, like the way they framed Mm -hmm. it, where it's like, they set it up, like all these people dropped out, nobody wanted to go Mm -hmm. and that nobody had any expectations because it was a young team and blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, they were also disappointed because they didn't do anything because they were young. You know what I mean? Like, it's Mm -hmm. like, you can't have it both ways where you set it up that, this team is underwhelming and then the team loses and then you're like well they were supposed to come in and win like houseway <laughs> so like i mean like that was always my my impression of the 04 team like i didn't look at it as like they failed i look at it like the, the u.s sent their b team and then they, like, they, they threw them together like less than a month before the game started they didn't have enough time in jail they had the worst possible coach for that team like it was a perfect storm of bullshit (laughs) you know what i mean um so i didn't look at it as a failure i looked at it as you know an unserious team and their chickens came home to roost essentially (laughs) making this malcolm x on uh in the documentary (laughs) they had like a news clipping where they were saying like all the players who dropped out and i paused the screen so i was like i want to see who dropped because i didn't remember like i had forgotten Mm -hmm. like that's the very first olympic games after 9 11 and thinking back to what the world was like at that time and that point uh, and how safety was an actual concern for americans at that point was well i'm not exactly sure how the rest of the world is going to really receive me right now but the players who dropped, Ray Allen, Mike Bibby, Elton Brand, Kobe Bryant, Vince Carter, Kevin Garnett, Jason Kidd, Carl Malone, Kenyon Martin, Tracy McGrady, Jermaine O'Neal, and Shaquille O'Neal. Still prime players, or like near prime. Pretty much everybody she just named is, was in their primes. Yeah. Yeah, that's all yeah. yeah. Like, that's... Yeah, that team right there probably could have won a goal. But uh, <laughs> when they, as Eric mentioned, they had Larry Brown come in to place. And Larry was Brown was not about to play no young guys. He and was not it. He came in all, with his actual coaching. Like, he, like, nah, bro. I know y'all all on here, but we can't play you still. Like, why? <laughs> the NBA was the one kind of like, okay, well, let's get our young, like, we got some young talent. Like, mm-hmm. like that. Like, let's let them, get, let them cook. And then Larry Brown's like, no, thank you. I, I'd I mean, rather not. <laughs> shit, the vets there was hating on them too. Like, nah, bro, y'all the young asses stay over there. We gonna go ahead and hoop over here. <laughs> I don't know if they used the word hating. It just felt more like it was clickish. Like the old dudes were already, like they knew who they were and they were already, they had some camaraderie. And then there's the, mm-hmm. the three young, like these three rookies who just finished their rookie year. Of course they gonna kind of naturally but it's three yeah. of them. If you got a roster of 12 to 15, like it's three kids. Y'all couldn't incorporate three. I mean, it, it, it came full circle for Carmelo because then on the 2012 yeah. or 2016 team, one of those teams, it, it was 2016 because everybody else had dropped off, like all the older ones. But it was him and a bunch of kids, like <laughs> born in the late 80s, early 90s. And he's just like <laughs> watching them sing like Miley Cyrus or something on the plane. And he's just like, how the fuck did I get here? So, like, it, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, you know, like there's there's an age gap. It's like Aaron Rodgers being in the same locker room as somebody born in 2002. Like, 
Thank you. Dyer? What, what they what they got in uh, <laughs> what do they have in common <laughs> besides occupation? Shoot, I mean, think about if, if you work with anybody who's far younger than you, it's kind of like, all right, but we're in different stages of life. Like we mm. might have some things in common, but like there's a nine year gap between me and my coworker. Or it's like, I don't know if we're gonna kick it, kick it, but <laughs> Ken, did you have any thoughts on the 04 team that you wanted to to share? Um, not really. Uh I guess going back to it, like I honestly forgot that Larry Brown was the coach. And then like realizing like he like he to re- like he wasn't it, like for real, for real. Like he he wasn't that dude <laughs> for this team. Yeah. To be fair, it was right after the chip. I was- I was gonna say like that was why he was selected as coach because mm-hmm. he was yeah, coming right. off the title. But again, like that's coming off the title with a bunch of veteran players. Like after he had already flamed out with Iverson in Philadelphia, like mm-hmm. Larry Brown had a very entrenched uh, reputation at that point. So Team USA, whoever whoever preceded Jerry Colangelo, like you knew what you were getting with Larry Brown. You still went down that road. Like 2002 team in the World Championships failed because they had George Carl like those aren't <laughs> those aren't the coaches that you want if you if you want a stable environment like that's why Coach K is perfect like he's mm-hmm. he's tough but he's fair he's not abrasive like that like he's very welcoming like George Carl Larry Brown like that's not the MO at all fuck you <laughs> <laughs> and one and, more thing. oh go ahead Eric I was just gonna say, just to underscore your point, like they were in the 2003 like America's tournament. The team USA was Iverson, Kid, McGrady, Jermaine O'Neal, Vince Carter, Mike Bibby, Kenyon Martin, Ray Allen, Tim Duncan, Elton Brand, Richard Jefferson. Like that team would have won gold. Yeah. Rather than a team that we did, I need to actually pull up the official 04 uh, roster. roster. But I just want to say. When they started talking about that team and they showed that first game against Puerto Rico, I was sitting there and I was like, oh, yeah. We did cooking. get waxed in the Carlos. very first No, I ain't know. Yeah. The Carlosis. <laughs> <laughs> Delfino and Arroyo cooking their ass, bro. Delfino's Argentina. Delfino's Argentina, ain't he? Oh, shit. This Arroyo, my bad. Yeah. Delfino Del- is Argentina. Delfino was my score. boy. I had a little a little jersey shirt when he played for the Bucks. Del Trino, that was my guy. Yeah. What's a royal? He just looked uh, like he smoked uh, cigarettes. <laughs> he he, he, he smoked smoke cigarettes for the game. <laughs> yeah, Del, uh, a royal was always like I'm, I've always had like a, a weird fandom of different players. Carlos Arroyo, because of his Olympic runs, was one of my favorite players because I'm like, bro, dude, be cooking. He need to get over to the league. See what he do over in the league. He came over in the league. He ain't really do that in the league, but he's he still scored. Delfino could still put the ball in the net. He just wasn't what I thought he would be after that international game. Same thing came with the fandom with Rubio. Same way. He was cooking in the United States. I'm like, bro, this motherfucker's a cold ass point guard. Yeah. Like, so he came over to the United States. I had big hoop dreams for him. I'm still a fan of Rubio to this day. But like my fandom for different players come from random shit like that. Just so y'all know. But a royal cook in the United States, I was not happy, but I fucked with it. <laughs> and it wasn't like that's kind of like the big difference between like to underscore this whole point. Like the 2004 team again was thrown together. What did Melo say? Like two, three weeks before they had to leave mm-hmm. for injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, like think about the Argentinian team. Those teams grew up playing together. Spain, same thing. Mm-hmm. Puerto Rico team, same thing. That Greece team, same thing. Like these are because these countries only have so much basketball talent. Like they have the same team consistently year to year. And because like a lot of those countries are like soccer, soccer centric countries. Mm-hmm. Like playing for your your national team is like the highest honor. Like they actually like you know place country over club, as opposed to the U.S. where it's like. Okay, cool. Like I, I'll give up my summer for this one time, but you know, I'm gonna throw this flag on real a, quick. I go get a gold medal, <laughs> but I, I, you know, like before Calangelo, like they weren't committing like year after year to participate. Yeah, and it's a it's a long road to to get to that Olympic uh, gold, and it's like it was fun too. Just think about the time period, and I think Tim, yeah, Tim mentioned it where it's like 
uh, we made this game. It's our game. We're going to walk in this gym. We're going to win. We can send the B squad. It don't matter. We're going to win. And at that point, the rest of the world was like, no. <laughs> the rest Stay of the world sweet. has caught up. Like, it's not sweet no more. This, is, this game is going global. And, and it, at this point, all the talent is not concentrated in the United States. Like, you better come ready to play. And you're playing their rules. Exactly. You're playing NBA rules. You're playing international rules. Exactly. That's a great point. So they lose. One thing I forgot. So I was kind of laughing when Carmel was like, you know, we came back home and it was just so much disrespect to us, like in our own country. And they played the clip from Jada Kiss. Oh, yeah. Jada Kiss. I forgot about that. I, I forgot they had a bar about them. <laughs> That's funny, Watching dude. USA keep losing. <laughs> keep getting blown out. <laughs> That's all he talking. He asking all these deep political questions, and then one of the questions he had to ask was, "Why is Team USA getting blown out?" <laughs> Good no, I also forgot about uh, Baby Shaq. Who, what team did he play for? Yeah, he played for Argentina. Okay, but... for Greece. Oh, Greece. That's oh, like, oh, wasn't it Greece? Greece. Yeah. I was like, yeah. But I forgot about Baby Shaq. And when he showed up, I was like, "Damn, this nigga like can." <laughs> just because the nigga husky, he just looked just he like you. That ain't gonna look shit like me, bro. At all. Just because the nigga like, husky. Like, I was like, this is how she would look if he was hooping, bro. You mean. Alright, bro. I'm telling I'm gonna send that fat coalition at your motherfucking ass. Nigga, it's sweet. Right. This man I didn't say it. nothing about your size. I just said he looked like you. But he don't look like, like him, Tim. He literally to you, does not look like To you. All three of us say he does not look like me. You don't wow. know. You don't know. Every time he said a word. He shook his I head. Shook he his head. Now, now, now you talking for him too, Camille. I said he ain't said a word. You just <laughs> talked over me when I said I shook my head. I heard what you said after the fact. You really think. I wish I could pull this up. I'm going to find a way to pull it up on the screen. Cut Ken hair off and keep the facial hair. Yes, they don't have the same face at Cut all. Ken this hair off. Said, <laughs> How do they look like me, bro? They don't look, look like Ken at all. You never know what the fuck, bro. They don't look shit like me, bro. There is no similarity found at all, me. bro. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Cut it. You give him a little fade, off. bro. If he did, I'm like, oh, the nigga look. Like no. Anyways, moving on. Oh, exactly. 14 loss. Can we cut Tim off for the rest of the right? Oh, Someone to give him some coffee or some water. This, so this man this came back. To game oh, he needs yeah. some milk. <laughs> he needs some shit. Any, yeah, my bad. Any. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh another thing I forgot too though. Um, is about them staying on the um on the cruise ship. Mm, yep. And I, I, was like, I know that had to be kind of difficult too. Like being, I they were basically isolated from from everybody. <laughs> So I know that played a huge role too. They didn't get that Olympic experience, staying in the village mm-hmm. and all that other stuff yeah. that goes along with it. Kicking yeah, with much, other athletes. As much as they complain about the bubble, I can only imagine. Playing on a croup, bro. No, in the middle of the damn ocean after every game, I gotta go sit in the water. I mean, not it's on a coast. <laughs> yeah. I ain't sitting in that big ass body of water by my damn self, bro. <laughs> regardless of the fact here now it's time to start looking forward to the 08 team as yeah. eric mentioned already larry brown was out coach k comes in it was funny hearing some of the player reactions like i don't really f with him like this does not excite me for u.s basketball i i'm not interested at this point yeah, I was going to say, like, that was kind of the, tur- the turning point for Coach K was becoming the national team coach because he developed those relationships with Kobe, with LeBron, Carmelo, uh, Chris Paul, all of them. And then he used those connections to kind of recruit the Kyrie's, Jason Tatum's, and all those. Like, once Duke started chasing one and does, like, he leveraged those relationships that he had from Team USA. Mm-hmm. For a street cred to get the kids like to come to Duke, so that was actually like that's what we have to thank life. for Duke of the last ten to twelve years. Mm-hmm. I did I did think about that often with Coach K and Duke and how the Olympic team because of their success after the fact was beneficial to him a lot because he never from that point had to actually step foot in the NBA. 
<laughs> ever again because not only did you lead a group of NBA players, you got the gold medal with a group of NBA players that are considered to be divas, got them to play together. Like, if you ever wanted a job in the NBA, of course it was going to be available after that point, but he never had to even consider it no more that he had that credibility with not only just the NBA players, but like you said, transitioning that to the street cred with the kids. Now all of the kids come because they see that shit. And you got a whole generation of kids now that want to come to Duke because Coach K coached into a, a, a title with LeBron or Kobe or whoever their favorite player was at the time. Mm-hmm. I would That's huge for him. I would push back on that a little bit. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I feel like Coach K had opportunities to come to the NBA previously to mm-hmm. him coaching the Dream or the Redeem team and taking over the reins of USA basketball. But he just never seemed to have an interest in it. Like he kind of feels seems like he was the guy who's like, I got a real good thing going mm-hmm. at Duke right now. Uh I'm happy with this. I'm good and then, but, to, but but to your point, being able to dabble with that mm-hmm. NBA talent through USA basketball. Um as you mentioned, probably could have satisfied any maybe itch he might have had of thinking about going there, being able to coach them at that level. That's something that probably could have happened for sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, I, I just think Coach K was kind of like, I'm a made man here. Like, I don't. I don't want my bread is butter. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, certain college coaches that they only use kind of the stepping stone to get to the NBA. But for Coach K, it always seemed like he was just fine being a legend at, at that level, which mm-hmm. he definitely did. They couldn't let go of that for you, uh, Roy Williams. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> is he uh, North Carolina coach? I know who Roy Williams is. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I said he couldn't let go of that feud, bro. Oh. <laughs> he had the lonely Blue Devils versus Tar Heels. <laughs> so, with that 08 team, though, with Coach K at the helm, one thing I did forget about them was that they had to qualify for the 08 Olympics. Like for some reason in my head, I think again, that American bias, I'm like, oh, well, I mean, yeah, of course we end up like, of course we gonna go to the Olympics to hoop because that's what we do. No, they had to fight and scrap for it. And to see them in 06 go and they're kind of like, okay, we, we're making these changes and we're growing. And it's one of those things like if it was a Disney movie, you would expect them to win at that stage. Like, oh yeah, like it came together. Like, I forgot yeah. they lost too. They did not. They did not. <laughs> they did not go. Uh, they still had some lumps and growing pains that they had to go through, which makes sense because, like Eric mentioned earlier, the competition has been playing together for years upon years upon years upon years, and this USA team is really trying to establish uh, that type of base. So it was, was kind of interesting shack, to be like, You were wilding, sir. I was. That was in 2006. It was the Argentina, I mean, the Greece game that they lost. And that's why the 2008, the first game was the get back game. Mm. He's right. I'm not lying. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, 2004, I wasn't all that surprised that they had lost because, again, like it, we just talked about it. 2006 <laughs> was when I was like, oh, damn. Like, it wasn't, to your point, it wasn't the Disney ending. It was like, okay, we're taking it seriously. We're taking it seriously now. We're not gonna overlook our opponents, and then they still got beat. So, like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, it wasn't concerning, but it was just like, okay, this ain't as easy as Shit, it was to me. What was? It was concerning to me. No. I like you niggas actually tried, and y'all still lost. Like, ooh. Are you, are you <laughs> saying it was concerning to you in real time when it was like going on? Yeah, like, because like, like I said, I I follow. I like I'm big Olympics world championships guy so when it happened they lost in the FIBA World Cup and then they turn around and lose and they lost in the Olympics then they were, lost in the World Championships I'm like bro I don't, I don't know like we got LeBron we got Wayne like we got cats that was priming <laughs> for real and like y'all lost again I was like maybe the world did catch up I know that so two things about that game one i feel like greece just played a perfect game or at least a perfect second half like dude's not missing um but then also i remember yana saying like in greece like that was like the moment like that team is still venerated in (laughs) in greece because it's like they knocked off the americans you know like baby shack is like was like a legend to black black greeks 
because of that performance. So, yeah, just a fun little, fun little side note. <laughs> well, they, again, they lost there. Next year, they come back together and it's like, okay, we got to win the FIBA Americas to be able to go to China and compete in the Olympics. And at this point, it's like, they got a little extra razzle dazzle that came into the fall here. Kobe Bryant finally shows up, told them he tired of watching them lose. It's time to <laughs> show the news to their face. I'm tired of watching y'all lose. And it's funny too, it's well not funny, but it was interesting because yeah. like he was supposed to be on the previous you, you know team, but he had all his whole other that's stuff when I, which that's when I hated Kobe. <laughs> You said no. what? I mean, like, 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 he, he snitched on Shaq. Like, what did he say about Shaq? Like, y'all can't allude to it and not like say why he won on the team. Like, oh man. Yeah, he here to fit us so they could even his eyes. No, but that was that was the time period where I was like, man, I don't mess with this coach. I didn't mess with I did not mess with him at that time because I, I mean so, a lot of that. Then he on the court, he was cocky as shit, talking shit. I'm like, I do not like this nigga. And at that hey, point in his career, he, he had three championships, but all his championships that came with Shaq at his side. So it was all of it was the Colorado situation going mm-hmm. on, the rape allegations, the Shaq leaving and Shaq getting the ring with D Wade and how he was going to bounce back and all that. So like at that point in time, Kobe Bryant was not a beloved figure. Period. Um, we got to we got to go to break. But when we come back, we'll continue with the Kobe Bryant conversation about where he was in his career and what the Redeem team was able to do for his career uh, and just him in general. So we'll be right back after these commercial breaks. And we are back from the commercial break tech file here. Tim, Eric, myself, Camille, and Ken discussing Netflix. Is Netflixes? Netflixes? Netflixes. <laughs> we the Netflix documentary, uh, the Redeeming Team. And before we had our break, we were talking about Kobe Bryant's, you know, uh, arrival to Team USA and what he was going through at that time. Uh, Tim already said, like, I was not a fan of him at that time. I was not a fan of Kobe at that time. And let me just also add, part of why I was not a Kobe fan was because of Ken. <laughs> this guy over here. He is also part of why I didn't like Kobe because he loved Kobe so much. And I felt like, yeah. I was like, no, nah, man. And then they cheated the Kings in that one series. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, y'all, y'all caught one. But Ken was Kobe's biggest fan. So, like, I do want to ask you, going back to that time with all that was going on around him, three mm-hmm. rings with Shaq. Now he's on his own. Uh, where were you in your particular Kobe fandom? And when you saw that he was joining <laughs> Team USA, did it, were you excited about him doing that? Or were you just kind of like, uh, whatever? Um. Well, around that time, I felt like I had to, because he wasn't getting, getting, the support from everyone else like he was like basically like the most hated man in, in the nba um around that time so i think that kind of elevated um my fandom for him just because i felt like i had to go even harder for him like yo like i understand you know what's going on legal troubles and stuff like that but he still is like one of the greats at, at this point still um but my personal opinion for when he was going to Team USA. I felt like I wanted him to not to do it. Like I mm-hmm. felt like I, was, I felt like it was too much. I felt like he needed to just chill. And because like if you if we go back and like we find the dates that like he went to court and like the games that he played like after or those same days, like he was dropping like 40, 50, like, you know, he literally was leaving like everything out on the court. And like, I feel like that entire season was like so emotional uh, for him. Like his play was like, was pure emotion. So I felt like he just took the, you know, took the summer to just relax or whatever. But um, as we see, like it actually like helped him, like helped catapult him back to, you know, where it, it, it helped him out a lot. Like, like, personally and like you know help um get his mind back right and then you know help turn the team around and then also watching this watching this too not just like being like tim hey tim 
this, this not isn't a Kobe fan. But like after watching this, like does this change your perspective of Kobe? Like his the, like mm-hmm. seeing like the impact that he had on the team, seeing like how like one single player was able to kind of like change the entire culture of like these other guys with these huge like egos and everything like that. You muted. You're muted, sir. You're on mute. To be fair, I do remember hearing some some of these kind of stories about Kobe coming out around the time the team that he joined Team USA. Mm-hmm. This was the start of me respecting him as a player, as opposed to just like saying "fuck him" all together. So mm-hmm. it did. His run with the Olympic team did help kind of change my perspective on it. And watching this actually kind of like okay, this is all. I thought this was okay. I respect him a little bit more because of that or whatever but uh, like i said like this was around the turning point for me anyways as far as like i still didn't fuck with him but i respected i started respecting his actual game on the court because i'm like bro the nick he just cold bro. <laughs> he, he just like yeah oh so it was still fuck him but <laughs> i respected him a lot more after the uh, olympic run and this, Trust me, and I, know, this I, I know about the fuck him list <laughs> And I did have to do some quick checks. I was trying to make sure I had my dates right. So the court stuff was around the 04 Olympics, which is part of why you didn't join that Olympics. And then going into the 08, I think he was injured the year before or the, like around like- Was that the hand? I think so. I'm I double, so. Checking, yeah. I'm I double checking the hand. background. But the at this point he had all of the court stuff kind of behind him. He had already lost I think he had he lost quite a few endorsements at that period of time mm-hmm. and it was interesting too when they were talking about like the dynamic of the team and they're like you got kobe coming in here and you know kobe in his prime kobe was like 28 29 and it's like okay that's kobe and then you got lebron who's the young the young guy who's coming up and he's dragging some trash cleveland teams to some places at this point and it's like okay every argument is who's the best player in the world is it lebron or is it kobe is it lebron or is it kobe, yeah, is it LeBron or is it kobe? and <laughs> at the time it was like okay you adding kobe to this team how is that going to change the dynamic that they got going on right here because if the two lead dogs here aren't getting along or whatever the case may be <laughs> awesome serious uh disharmony amongst the rest of the team so it was really interesting kind of see how lebron and kobe played off of each other like Mm -hmm. i've heard so much about lebron's leadership style and who he is as a teammate and you always hear the stories but it was kind of interesting being able to see like the behind the scenes footage of him and he's cracking jokes and he's you know trying to just keep it light because he's like that's what i'm gonna have to do here like kobe ain't gonna talk too much but that's okay i like to talk like i, I got that like, i can do that kobe's the on court i'll do it here i can talk i can keep everything light and going on in the background when we're doing this so i love watching their dynamic uh and, gr- and grow and flourish a little bit more it felt real good cop bad cop yeah it's a good way to put it it was it was dope how his work ethic rubbed off on everybody else which i've always been and everybody who knows me fucks with defense i've always been a big defensive guy whether it's football baseball basketball whatever sport it is i've always been a fan of defense kobe earned their respect by coming in first and foremost playing fucking defense like bro stop with this ole shit no you ain't going you ain't going you ain't going to do something Next thing you know, Cats is starting to try to play a little better defense. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, he's he working out in the morning. They parlaying until 5 a.m. He already <laughs> got his <sweat. laughs> like, way. Mello told it perfectly. Mello's storytelling was perfect. But long story short, motherfuckers coming in at 5 a.m. Kobe just got done lifting weights and shit. Like, bro, what the fuck are you finna do? Oh, I'm finna go to the gym. They're like, oh, hell no. We, it's too damn early in the morning. He, he on his way to the gym. They just coming in from the club at 5 a.m. in the morning. That was a great story. That was beautiful. That's a great story. And it goes back to that, like, Team USA is coming together. They're doing things together. So they're like, we, we in Vegas. We're going to go out for a night. Kobe, you you, you trying to come with? And Kobe like, no, nah, y'all, y'all. Y'all got that. 
And it was funny hearing the different people like recounting the story because it's how life goes where the details are a little fuzzy, but the general <laughs> message of it remains the same because mm -hmm. I forget, I think LeBron was like, yeah, we got back in five, six in the morning. You got Carmelo like, oh, it was like four in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you got these My little boozer like, yeah, we about five, about five in the morning. He already worked for sweat. Ain't nobody talking about no sweat. And all of a sudden, Carlos Boozer or with Melo, hey, okay. with the sweat. Full sweat. <laughs> Hey, I respect Melo though, because he ain't jacking like, yeah, you know, I ain't no good. He's like, nigga, I'm going to sleep. Y'all <laughs> like, niggas got it. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to and, bed. And, and <laughs> kind of make it seem as if he's like the last one to kind of be like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to come wake up with y'all and go work out too. Because mm -hmm. the first yeah. two on board when they saw Kobe was Bron and D Way, where they were like, oh, this does is that make sense though? When I seen that, I was like, oh, that makes sense mm -hmm. to me. <laughs> Yeah. It, it was also funny, like talk about Boozer. Like Boozer kept trying to like lump himself in with the other ones that were on the 04 team. He's like, yeah, it was just the four of us from that same team. And like when you talk to D Wade and, Le and LeBron and Carmelo, they all just talk about the other three, like the three of them. Like they never even Boozer. <laughs> yeah. Boozer's like, LeBron yeah, wanted you? Boozer though. I mean, didn't he get a Boozer after the Olympics too? No, Wasn't that uh, the whole fiasco? Fiasco. Wait, you said didn't he? Didn't he? Get didn't Boozer? LeBron get Boozer after that? Uh, when did he no, join? Boozer the... left. Oh Wait. no, he left in 03. But he joined four. Okay, my bad. <laughs> but no, I mean, it, but it goes to show again, like outside of USA trying to come together with the camaraderie, you also need that work ethic. And Kobe was able to kind of come in and inject some of that into the team and that was like another step I feel like they needed to take because as we had saw before his arrival they played a lot better but they still weren't able to go at the FIBA World Championships in 06. 07 comes, mm -hmm. Kobe comes, the work ethic, the mm -hmm. culture in that way changes a little bit more because now everybody's aware like we're in the presence of one of like, the, like he's a great, we, we know he's a great, we watching him, we soaking mm -hmm. this up and they start taking on some of his work habits like Tim was mentioning and you start seeing the results. 07 comes, they head to the FIBA of the World Championships in 07. Mm -hmm. FIBA Americas. The Americas, um, FIBA Americas in 07. Before we get to that tournament, I just, I want to say like, I think that that's why, you know, like people be like, oh, he spent the summer with Team USA. He's about to have like the best year of his career. Like, I think that being exposed to different people's work habits, like having like that iron sharpens iron, like summer, like it's it's not necessarily playing for Team USA, it's practicing with Team USA that really gets people's like makes them better because again, like mm -hmm. you playing against the best every day in practice, you you have to figure it out. So like then you take what you learn over that summer and then apply that to the NBA, like you off <laughs> you off and running. So like I think that. To that point, like I think Kobe kind of he seemed to have instilled like that sense of competition mm -hmm. that kind of like helped people become better professional basketball players. It's a it's a matter of do you do you want it like he wanted? Like you you see, okay, you practicing with the best, you're going against the best every day. You see his work habits, you see he giving it up. Like, do you want it as bad as he like you gonna that's why I said when Wade and LeBron join. That makes sense. Like shit, you talking about them three as the best three players in the NBA, so it only makes sense that them two are the next two to jump on immediately. Like, and I do you want that it? That was, <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason why, like, the 04 team was what the 04 team was because the vets that you had, like, set aside Tim Duncan, like we know what Tim Duncan is, yeah. but Tim Allen Duncan. Iverson, <laughs> Stephon Marbury, like, they weren't known as like their competitors, but they weren't known as workers. They weren't known as professionals you know what i mean like so like they come show up in the gym and they just like let's go who late whereas kobe like he, like kobe got every ounce of of talent of success out of his body like whatever kobe's maximum is that's what we got because like he made and sure so. he wasn't leaving nothing <laughs> nothing there so like if that was the culture before kobe where it's you know oh we just show up we hoop we go out we have fun we kicking it blah 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 like that next generation of superstars that came up behind them, your LeBrons, your Dwayne Wade's, Chris Paul's, like they all had long, I mean, injuries notwithstanding, they all had long careers because like they put in the work year after year to get better. Mm -hmm.
That's facts. That's facts. And then we look at the team makeup too, just as well. I feel like the team makeup just made more sense with that USA team. So, because outside of them, like they did have three of the best point guards at the time, they ended up competing in the 08 Olympics with them on that redeemed team. And in the center, Dwight was still in his prime. I mean, like it was, it was a, it was a stacked team. It was a stacked team. They win the 07 um, FIBA Americas qualify for for Beijing is on and running and this time in the Olympics you can see they're doing things different there's no yacht they are not staying in the yacht off the coast no banana boats (laughs) (laughs) no banana boats they stay in the Olympic Village you see them going out to other Team USA sporting events together in groups cheering on the other athletes that was cool to see and another thing that was cool to see was how freaking famous Kobe Bryant was in China. Oh, they was they famous. Oh, they, they bought they knew it because it was famous until they got over there. Facts. <laughs> Facts. That's what Brian had to be like, oh my God. Like, like, I thought I was here with this nigga. Yeah, he ain't touching this nigga. Like, here? I need that. I need that. He, was, he damn near is Michael Jackson level over here for real. Low key. The Why? cynic in me is thinking like, that Chinese market, that's why so many people wanted to play in 08 versus 04. Mm. Mm. They did, they did miss Cause like, think of like, that business. Dwayne Wei is uh, the primary endorser for a Chinese footwear company now. Like, the seeds that he planted on that 08 team, like, pre- benefits, like, throughout his career. Same with Bron. Bron is huge in China. Mm. To this day. Because, you know, again, but. But the love Kobe got, I. That was kind of like what you were seeing when Jordan was traveling in Barcelona with the Dream Team, where it was like everyone else, like yeah, we we get it, y'all good, we like y'all too. But Jordan, like that's who we really want to see. Like I think it was Steve Kerr who had mentioned something like, you know, I was able to just kind of walk out the front of the hotel and <laughs> I would just take off all my team USA. I would just walk out, nobody bothered me. Jordan tried to sneak out of different doors in the background to try to get to where he was getting to. <laughs> I didn't have those problems. I just went right out the door. And Kobe was, it made me laugh because he was, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed, but like the support's okay, cool. And it's, oh, right. And it's all I would have been, been, been basket in that shit. He was. In. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Acknowledge me. <laughs> like, yeah, I am that cold. Yeah, yeah. I am you. Yeah, I actually thought about the other Michael, like the way that they're reacting to him. Like that was Michael Jackson level. Yeah, that's so, what was like. That was like, that was like come on, people was fainting. <laughs> fainting. Now, now, are you are passing out in public this? because you seen this man? Bro. Come on now, like what's going on here? Like when Michael Jackson didn't say a word and people was just fainting. He just stood on the stage. Ah, he just stood there, bro. People just. He stood there. <laughs> oh, I love you, my God. <laughs> they picking grown men up off the ground. <laughs> Dragging you by your ankles and shit. <laughs> man, let's <listen. laughs> Once yeah. the Olympics was kicked off, though, and it was time to put put the the ball up, roll the ball out, and who? Team USA was ready. They got to have some 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 get backs. Play China, beat them. That's cool. But uh, then they got to play Greece again. They was like, okay, yeah, we got some we got some beef with Greece, and we got to we got to get this one back. Got they get back. Played Spain. Yeah. Yes. And that first game against Spain, Kobe's buddy Paul Gasol was hooping. You know, everybody's talking about Spain is the other team, the other country that could really win it all. And Spain is so good. And Spain, Spain, Spain. 2006 World Champions. And Kobe is like, I'm going to run through Paul in the first play. Run through that. I was, I was thinking of that uh, Marshawn Lynch quote where he like, run through a motherfucker face. Over and over. <laughs> <laughs> like the way he kept rewinding it. <laughs> he man, he smoked Paul Gasol, bro. The other player reactions made it so. Like when I saw Chris Bosh, he like, oh, I was like, oh. I was like, animated. I love it. Okay. Uh, and Paul face though, when he was on the ground, he was just like, oh shit, what happened? I thought I was gonna be you came by the crib yesterday. What were you doing? 
The teammates loved you and shit. You brought pizza, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> My wife in the audience. You out here embarrassing me. <laughs> the most terrible. Blew him out. Blew him out. You know, no. speak. I'm sorry. Another random fandom. Rudy Fernandez. <laughs> I used to fuck with Rudy Fernandez too. That man turned into Michael Jordan in the gold medal. Nigga. Rudy Fernandez was. I always felt like he could have been, he should have been, never mind. I ain't gonna get into all that. But yeah, I was a fan of Rudy Fernandez too. Kind of like how folks feel about uh, old boy that played on Imagine Now He on New York. Uh, um, fucking light skin yeah. cat. Light skin foreign be, cat. Uh, Fournier. Evan Fournier. Is he? Rudy yeah, he's no, he's in New York now. That's what I'm saying. He was on Orlando. He's in New York. But I felt about Evan Fournier is how I felt about Rudy Fernandez. I felt like Rudy Fernandez could have been like a, a nice bucket off the bench, shit like that. Three points, you know, nice three, nice mid range. He's crafty when he needs to be and shit like that. It didn't pan out for him either. No, it didn't. <laughs> but, but the Olympics, he was cold. But. It panned out for Team USA. They got through the group play pretty, you know, easy. Through it. Beat Australia. Next up is Argentina. Get back. And <laughs> one thing I did forget about the 08 team going into it, because, like, yeah, they won in 07. Everything was good. But then you got to make it through the 07 NBA season healthy. I had completely forgot. That's when D-Wade got hurt. I forgot mm -hmm. all the noise that was around D-Wade about his play so that he can be able to come back in 08 and how they motivate him like oh everybody's saying uh Ginobili's the best you know the second best shooting guard in the league and when D-Wade was like uh all right Kobe you got a scratch itching Jesus that was a wild scratch sound like you got a scratch in your bones or I something probably scratching the mic the mic right here too yes that's what it was all right <laughs> <laughs> so, to see D-Wade's reaction when he's like okay I'll, I'll give you Kobe if you want to Say Kobe is better than me, but you ain't about to say that man who knows he's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Not great, boss. All right. They come out there playing, you know, on fire. Then Ginobili gets hurt. Ginobili was cold. And then here comes Argentina. <laughs> Open. Cooking them. They lost their best player and decided to keep cooking. Took the team, it took the team USA a while to be able to get that separation, but once they were able to, like, they they took off. Louis Skull is an issue. Blue he was an issue. Our team was a good. I mean, it was a good. It was a good team. Um, that gets to my point. When, like they played together for forever, so even if right. it, they weren't just built around Ginobili, mm -hmm. and Delfino was there too. That was Delfino was nice. Too. So, gold medal game, USA and Spain. We already mentioned Spain had already got work. They got waxed <laughs> before. Paul Gasol got his chest ran through. They lost yeah. embarrassingly. Team USA is like, we know. They're going to come out and they're going to try to get they get back. We got to be mentally sharp. And that game was back and forth and back and forth. And it was funny because as I was watching the documentary, I was sitting there and I was like, I did watch this game live because I started remembering things of the game like as I was watching it. But Memories are funny in that way, whereas I just don't think about the 08 Olympics often. So, like, it's not an active thought in my head. But once I started seeing it, I was like, oh, yeah, this game it was a good ass game. <laughs> Every time they thought to <laughs> knock them out, here comes Spain. Like, they was not about to go. Stay within five to six points, bro. You always at the striking distance. Always, always, always. But Team USA did pull it out, they got their gold medal. Um, I loved was it Doug Collins. Mm -hmm. I loved the involvement with him, and I did not know the history. Of I didn't the either. 17. Yeah, I did not know that. I was that's like, that's what, that was fucked up. Yeah. Like, who got the To be like, that's this time back. And hey, like, yo, add, give him three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> give him a three. <laughs> what? For, for what? All they needed. He was right. What was, what what they was needed. the clock? <laughs> what, what, what was the issue? Y'all scored. We need three more seconds. <laughs> but to see Doug Collins be able to kind of get that embrace and 
that's when I was starting to feel like, okay, like Team USA has really built some camaraderie, like through the decades of players and whatnot. Um, it's really cool to see. But that's kind of how the documentary ends. You know, you see them celebrating, they win. They're talking about what it meant for them and how big it is and all the other good stuff. So do y'all have any other thoughts on the 08, the gold medal game or the team itself in general? I enjoyed that uh, the redeemed team tour <laughs> from start to finish. The, the conception of the team. Oh, and Jerry Coangelo, I didn't realize he was that like, geez, Louise, bro. Yeah. Like I understood like he made he built some bangers, but I didn't realize he was building bangers, bro. <laughs> so shout team. out to that hire and that kind of really infrastructure team USA. That, that's all I really got to say. Eric Kent. I've stated my opinions on documentaries produced by the subjects of the documentaries, and this felt a lot like myth making because, again, I was here for all of this, and they kind of forced some of these narratives <laughs> that they pushed throughout the thing. Like, the, people did not think B Way had fallen off. They, he was hurt. Like, that was all it was. And the 04 team wasn't like this colossal failure that got ridiculed, like, all summer. Like, People forgot about that shit by the time no, they went. Uh, niggas no, niggas was smoking their ass. No, no, they were smoking their ass for a while. They got ridiculed for a while. <laughs> forgot about that shit by the time the NBA season came back around. No, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll say this because they're talking about like we don't we don't have that much time. We got like two minutes left or so. But they mentioned the fact that like you know you have Celtics fans come up to Kobe being like go get gold for the United States, and I just. And maybe it's it's a maybe it's me as a black woman in my own bubble, but like I don't have that sense of patriotism when it comes towards Olympic sports. Like of course, like yeah, it'd be cool if Team USA wins, but like I wouldn't see uh, Jimmy Butler or some you know right now and be like, oh my fam, like go and get that goal. You know what I'm saying? Like no, nah, after the Heat, like that's where I'm at right now, and I love you, <laughs> Marquette, yeah. love all the way, whatever. But like no, I'm not feeling that. So uh, yeah, I that just was like to. To what you said earlier, it's like you don't think about the 08 Olympics very often. It, even the Olympics that we just had last year, like I don't think about that that often. It's not that it's not top of mind. Like even if they would have lost the gold medal, I wouldn't have been like, oh man, it seems frauds. And every time I see Jason Tatum, I'm gonna look at him like, you a fraud because the Olympic team lost. It's like, all right, it happened. It, we move on, and then NBA season come along. Like, it, yeah, I get it, but. I, it was enjoyable, like it was an entertaining documentary, but it's just like it felt like myth making to me. Which <laughs> I just feel, I think what Americans that I think it's like a thing like we don't really care about it unless we lose. And I feel like that's that's really all that it comes down to. Like if we, if we win, like that's what we expect. But when is when we're losing and things are close, it's like wait, 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 wait. Let me pay attention right now because what's happening right here. And that's how mm -hmm. I kind of felt with this past Olympic team, where it was like people were like, "Oh, they they losing." Like I'm about to watch because now I don't know if it's gonna be a guaranteed thing. And I'm like, y'all weird, but yeah. whatever the case may be. Ken, do you have any closing thoughts before we get out of here? No, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it. Facts. Okay, rapid fire, real quick. Go around tech order. Rate this documentary out of five stars. Tim, uh, I give it a five. It almost made me cry, like different, like two different points. That's real. That Kobe stuff was touching. Eric, yeah, I give it a four. The Kobe stuff got to me. Same. I'll give it a good four, four and a half. Can? Yeah. I had a Denzel tear. I wasn't ready to hear it. He still gets me. That's fair. Yeah, it's still surreal that he's not here. Um, yeah. But definitely enjoy the documentary. If you have not seen it, but you decide to listen to us talk about it, kudos to you. We hope that you go and check that out. Um, and again, we say thank you to the good news as we sign off for the final time. But if you want to follow us, make sure that you hit up, you know, Technical File Podcast on Facebook at Technical File on Instagram, on Twitter, Technical File Podcast, on Facebook. We are still putting out weekly shows, uh, as we always have been, on whatever your favorite streaming platform is. So make sure that y'all check us out going forward. And if you want to follow me on social media personally, you can catch me on Twitter, Instagram, these PSN 2K Streets, and Apple Music at Camille Monet, C-A-M-I-L-L-E-M-O-N-A-E, because... 
your mom is fancy. Hey. Yeah. You want fancy now? Hey. Yes. Yes. It will be allowed every time it's brought up. Exactly. I'm gonna run it. Hey, you're a 2021 NBA champion, Milwaukee Bucks burner on Twitter. That's all you get. That is all you get. Um, everyday underscore gentleman on Instagram. Hey, Harris 216 on Twitter and Snapchat. And it's your boy T I M K I N Z V number three, aka Ass Ketchum, aka Mr. Give It To Me. <sighs> C'est la vie. So long, farewell. Bye, y'all. Be safe. <laughs> <laughs>